and welcome everyone here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some ephemeral aggro. So it's been uh, since since the update uh, about a week ago or so with the new patch, I guess it was exactly a week ago, we hadn't played a Hecarim deck yet. And so it's been a little bit since we have. So now let's go ahead and try new Hecarim. Hecarim was powered down. You know, it's a six mana, four, five now instead of a four, six. And the Spectral Riders that Hecarim attacks with are now two twos instead of three twos. So power down. But they still wanted to, you know, make it not so, so it's not so powered down. So Hecarim now only has to attack with seven ephemeral allies and whenever to transform. So it should be easier to transform and uh, or level up, as you will. And whenever you attack with a leveled up Hecarim, um, your ephemeral allies have plus three, plus zero now instead of plus two. All right, so um, we're going to try a, a Hecarim deck. Now we're going very aggressive with the uh, ephemeral aggro. As you can see, everything else costs three or less besides the Hecarims. I actually really thought about doing Callista with this deck instead of Hecarim, to be honest. Um, our deck does have a lot of things die. That's why we're a prankster deck. You know, like we have a lot of ephemeral creatures that die. And so I really thought about using, trying Callista out. Um, but more I really thought about it and everything. And I, I played a couple of just games, just kind of practice, just kind of see how it went. And honestly, just Hecarim is, is just going to be a lot more powerful. And so um, sticking with Hecarim. In the, this would be a good Callista deck. It's just Zed and Hecarim are, are just both very, very good. But anyway, yeah, so we're going full on um, ephem ephemeral creatures. You know, we got Shadow Fiends in here and Shark Chariot. Shark Chariot's one of our, our biggest things. Like, this is a, you know, it's a really important card for us. Um, Silent Shadow Seer is the only epic that costs one or two mana in the game. So it's the only two mana epic. Um, so that just kind of tells you that it's probably something that's supposed to be played a good amount. And so uh, going with that. Now, we're, uh, one thing that I, I haven't had in this deck, like the last time that I played, is I never played Oblivious Islander in the deck. And I think that was a mistake. The Islander has been was kind of nice, like whenever I was trying this out. Um, so Islander, you know, this is something I didn't really realize, but, you know, it, it grants an ally in hand, ephemeral, reduces its cost by one, so the ephemeral doesn't matter, but you, you can just reduce the cost in hand of one by some of the stuff. So, you know, turn one, you can play an Islander and a Shadow Fiend and attack for six, get a lot of damage in immediately. But um, something that's really cool with it is making Shadow Seer only cost one, because then whenever you just, you just have a one mana Shadow Seer, and then whenever it strikes, you create a copy of it, so it you know, you create a copy of the one mana Shadow Seer, and you can just have one mana for that Shadow Seer all the time. So that's that's pretty awesome. Um, but there we go. You know, you can, you can make you can make your Hecarim cost less if, if you need to, to to get it in earlier. Um, but yeah, so this is super aggressive. It uh, doesn't have a whole lot of removal. Uh, it's just all about attacking and, uh, you know, having Prankster help finish off the opponent. And... Uh, yeah, that's that's what we got. So let's play some ephemeral aggro. We're gonna go play it over in ranked. And here we go. And we got a brand new board. I think I'll keep this. So I didn't realize the boards changed the music and everything too, so. Um... Fresh catch. Well, it was fresh. So hopefully this is. Hopefully those y'all uh, watching like even like later on YouTube. Hopefully you guys enjoy like the the new board, the new music. I'm going with the Shadow Isles one with our ephemeral deck. Push back the darkness. Everything's better with company. Says you. Uh, 
Um. I am the blade in the darkness. Break their spirit and their soul. Ouch. Man, what a start for my opponent. Really weathered my super aggressive opener perfectly. Let's move. So, I guess, man. Man, what a, what a hand for them. I thought I had a good hand, but no, I guess I didn't. Seven mana. Do not deny me. The order. Hmm. Well, that's not good. This fight is over. Yeah, you're right. Yep. I was hoping they were going to do some blocking, and then, you know, then I would be doing the deathmark stuff. And I was going to be able to deathmark both of my creatures. They didn't do any... They didn't do any blocking. Okay. Discipline and steel. Sure is dark, eh? Soldier, it's me. Am I sleep or shadow? Show them our metal. Unfortunately, you know, we just got a little too far behind, but, um... You never know. I think I hold on to... I don't think I use this, even though I could use this and kill that 3-3. I think I hold on to it. I think. Maybe I don't. Yeah, yeah, Hecarim top deck. Um, even just a Silent Shadow Seer top. Another Silent Silent Shadow Seer top deck would be great. Zed top deck would be great. Prankster, not so much. Well, any of those, yeah, any any of those three cards probably would, yeah, like any of those those three cards would have would have won for me. Um, so yeah, we came really close to winning this. Came really close to winning that. That the opponent had a perfect start. 
off. No. Welcome, Hatta. Alright, you just missed our first game. It was a pretty good close game. Um, my opponent made a really good non-block there that that cost me that. Draven Timo. Hmm. Send them all back. Keep Hecarim. Keep Hecar Hecarim. Yeah, Red. I mean, I, I still like the Thresh version version of Spooky Karma. I think that's the the best version of Spooky Karma. Um, and I I'm still playing the one Mark of the Isles in there. I've played it one time with since the Mark of the Isles nerf, and it was still uh, it still played pretty. You know, it still played good enough. I still keeping that in there. Um, yeah, the changes to the the upcoming changes to the economy is is overall a, a pretty good upgrade. Um, it's Draven time. Question is, play Scourge or not? Play Scourge, they can't attack. Okay. Um Yeah, I'll I'll fix that. Let's see. Thank you, Rex, I'll fix that. That should work now. But yeah, that's so to find my deck list. Yeah, that's that's where all of my decks are. Um, you can also check the YouTube channel. Let's see if that that command works anymore. Nope. All right, we gotta I gotta make that command now. Do 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 do. Please control. The YouTube channel, you know, has all the the replays and everything, and is pretty easy to to use, and that has the decks and the information about them. Command add YouTube. Um, YouTube.com slash my commands are a little off now because I, I removed stream labs or stream sorry stream elements okay let's see How to do this? Feels like a bacon. I am a true master. <laughs> Seven mana. worth doing this.
the mark with the plus two plus two just didn't didn't help me get any damage in. That's a lot of grenadiers. That's a, some there's some great blockers. They're gonna need to block with everything, basically. I guess I could have just gone. For oh no, no, because they have the Teemo, right? No, we're not dead. I mean, I I want them not to. If they don't block with Boom Crew, they would die, right? Like if they if they wouldn't have blocked with Boom Crew, I would have had Mark of the Isles and killed them. But you know, so now they they need another burn spell now to kill me. I was hoping that they didn't block with Boom Crew and they were wanting Boom Crew to win the game for them. Triple Legion Grenadier was pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome for them. Uh, if you just move your cursor over this eye, this Oracle's eye, it's a Vagual. You get to see that. Vidual. Um. They'll never see it coming behind you. No, we didn't have any shrooms, but... I feel like my opponent was very fortunate to win that. They drew really well with uh, the rummage. Hitting the decimate. Then, you know, getting some more direct damage. Uh, we, we don't know if they top decked it or they had it in hand, and we're just waiting to cast it. Uh, I don't know. Alright, third aggro mirror. So this is going to be another race. Um... That's a bad draw. Really don't need another one of those. Sure is dark, eh? Yuck. 
That's a good hand. Or like, that's a good card to play, because they, they can pretty easily just chump block the 5-4. Oh, speaking of good card to play. It's time. They have no mana available. I could have the 2 1 block, but it's kind of good to have the 2 1 out for the prankster. But actually, you know what? Let's, let's go like this. Keep my toughness up. He <laughs> just cast the jury rig when they have an axe in hand. My mind is blown. <laughs> yeah, maybe they have something else they want to discard, like the vision. Yep, they have vision. Normally I would just want to attack with my 5-2, but now I want to get this Shadow Seer in play and get that going. I should probably just do the 5 damage though before they play another crappy like 2-1 or House Spider. I'm glad I just got that 5 damage in. Mm. Wish I had the mana for the Glimpse Beyond, but... Where are my champions? We got any champions in here? Let's do this. Really hope they don't have another vision. They discarded Brothers Bond. Brothers Bond seems like a card that would be pretty good to have. Yeah, that's kind of weird, right? Discarding the Brothers Bond. Really wish we could have glimpsed beyond before. No! Ugh.
Should have just attacked for four. Keep playing this thing. Well, that's not so bad, though. Champions exist. <laughs> we found him. Um, man, I wish Shark Chariot could block. I wish he could play Shark Chariot and just block with it. Dude, Shark Chariot would be so good. If you would block with it. What are pets do? We got a dancing shark. Oh, you can rub the shark's belly. You can rub the shark's belly. Yeah, yeah, Shark Chariot would be pretty broken if it could block. What if you could block with Shark Chariot if you use the shark? Um, if you had the, you know, this thing, the shark pet. Yeah, that was my plan. I was thinking that I'd have to just open attack. Because, yeah, they would, they would be able to kill Hecarim. That. Um... I think I'm dead. I think I'm dead. If they can just play this card in their hand, I'm dead. Man, all three of these games, I thought that we were going to win, or at least, like, the first game, maybe not, but we had a chance, but... This game, I, I really thought that we were winning basically the whole time, but, you know, double augmented experimenter, you know, drawing... All these Dravens and now Jinx, it's it's been tough. You know, they've drawn an extra six cards. Yeah. Um, I'm dead. What if I would have played what if I would have just played Shark Chariot and Green Glade Duo last turn? I mean they would have just killed my my Hecarim. What if I would have just not blocked?
And then I could have played both of those. I would have been down, down to four. Oh, they don't get... Never mind, they don't get... Um, Right, they, they didn't get the uh, Super Mega Death Rocket last turn. How am I supposed to get this thing to do damage, I guess? Because obviously I need this to hit for four in the air. Oh, they have a burst speed spell? Why couldn't they just have another creature if they just played another creature? It had to be a burst speed spell. My game wasn't very happy about that loss, as you can see. This is sad. I, I feel like our deck is, is pretty cool and everything, but we're just like barely, barely losing these aggro mirrors. get rid of this, which means I guess I get rid of this, because we don't have another card to pair with it in hand. Because their, their deck's a... a um, you know, you know, go wide deck, and they, they have... their deck's great at chump blocking, and so that, that one mana 5-4 is not good against chump blockers. Start blocking. It's a tough turn three card on the attack. Oh no. Now, I, man, I have so many options. Hmm. So let's play Soul Shepherd, play Silent Shadow she Seer, and then have Glimpse Beyond backup, or play Zed. And have like death mark available. This is tough. The <laughs> first option sounds more fun. It does. No. does, and I regret not doing it right about now. That's a good card. Let's move. Lady Elise, where are you? Get out of here, Elise. Alright, maybe not. That was a perfect card for them to have. Draw t two mana, draw two, plus kill my thing.
So now Hecarim or Soul Shepherd, Silent Shadow Shear, Haunted Relic. Let's go with all the twos. It's easier to play Hecarim on their turn. Um. Oh, the copy is two mana? I thought the copy would be one mana. Oh, that's... Like this? That's unfortunate. Yeah, I thought, I thought the copy would also be one mana. Yeah, I knew it wouldn't keep the buff, so I guess that makes sense. Because I've done it before with the buff, and I knew it wouldn't keep the buff. So, yeah, I guess it's... Yeah, I guess not. Oh, let's see. So Relic would be good at blocking a lot more things. Think I got something. But... Oh, the problem with playing Relic there is then I could not afford Hecarim at that point, so then whenever I, next turn out of 8 mana, so I could play Hecarim in like one Shadow, Sheer, Shadow Seer. But that's it. Um... on having like their best card they could have. No, Heck won't level this turn. So yeah, Heck Heck just has one attack so far. Three threes blocking the five five. Instead of having a one one block the five five and the three three block the two two, like why? Oh, because they just well no, because the one one would have blocked the five five. The one one would have died still. to block with Hecarim. Dang.
There's a card with random effects? What, Teemo, I guess? But anyway, that's 10, 13, 14. Awesome. All right. We got our first win. There we go. We got our first win of the day. Now we're now we're ready. Now we're ready. Okay, pretty decent hand. Draven Ezreal. I'll keep it. I am Bonin, yes. I am from the US. Yeah, Draven Ezreal is a like this is definitely a good deck and probably a good deck against us with all like the cheap removal, you know, that the four mana, deal one to two different things. Static Shock, it's probably awesome against us. Hey, Krabby. Why, I, this is a Shark Chariot turn. Yeah, I should definitely be playing Shark Chariot. I was too worried about petting my pet instead of making the correct play. But yeah, this is a Shark Chariot turn. That's not good. I can't stop Draven at all. Uh, so that's not good. I was definitely hoping they were going to be more controlly and trying to kill all my stuff. That's not good. So I'm definitely playing Shark Chariot. It's just so then am I playing Green Glade Duo or Soul Shepherd? I think I save Shadow Seer to be able to get back. I, so yeah, I'm saving the Shadow Seer. Um, the Duo is the higher upside, but if they have Static Shock, playing Duo really plays into that. I don't think I'm supposed to play into Static Shock. So we'll play the Soul, soul Shepherd. Like 
do have 10 cards. They're they're definitely casting something before they draw. And then my next turn, I'll play Prankster and Duo. And then untap Hecarim. Wow, that was great. Just get to block that thing. Oh, that's why my opponent always have, like, everything that's, like, the best they can have. Like, that's just amazing. How today's gone. That jury rig was awesome. Pony want a carrot? Wow. And talk about awesome. Talk about awesome. Well, I guess we're we're playing this onslaught of shadows. Another jury rig? Dang. <laughs> Could you draw this up any better? Is it possible? It's unreal. Hey, Sanctuary Tank. Just, yeah, every single perfect answer. Right oh, we're getting beat so bad, I know. Ugh. I know, this kills Hecarim. I know, I know. Hmm. Surprised they didn't just use a spinning axe there to pump their thing to kill my Hecarim. I guess they want to use something else. Why not use a, a, a spinning axe? Save that. So two cards to, to level up Ezreal.
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm dead if they have Ezreal. I, I shouldn't really... I mean, I can't play around it. Like, there's nothing to do to play around it. If they have Ezreal, I, I'm dead. Because, yeah, so... Yeah, I bet that's why they use that, that Blade's Edge was to level up Ezreal. If one of these three cards is Ezreal, I'm just dead on the spot. Because now Ezreal's flipped, and so they just need to cast three spells, which they can. So. Good, they don't have Ezreal right now. Sure they do after that. Can this get there? Nope. See, we still, like, we've been getting our opponents so close to dead in these games where they have had every perfect answer. So, like, I really don't feel like our deck's that bad. Like, we're 1 and 4, but... Like, one card different every single time, we could be 5-0. It's kind of crazy. Just one mana decimate. Shark Chariot. It's my card. I need these Glimpse Beyonds last last game whenever my opponent was, you know, killing all my stuff. That would have been a great card to have last game. Alright, we spent two cards to do 10 damage. Ugh, it's Glimpse Beyond. I don't want you. I don't want you. We both have to see four things die to level up. And they're about to see four things die. So these are about to both level up. It's pretty great. Pretty great. How do we draw triple glimpse beyond? Last matchup, glimpse beyond would have been amazing. This matchup, it's horrendous.
Yeah, like does yeah, does the collision Callista Lucian deck get any better? Turn turn four being able to flip Lu, Lucian and Callista on turn four. Does it get any better? Probably not. Check him out, Sanctuary Tank. Thank you. Obviously, I can't attack because they get, you know, they get an attack step if I do. Doesn't matter. They couldn't put Lucian last on their other attack because the Shark Chariot comes in and, and is the last attacker. They couldn't they couldn't put the Shark Chariot whenever they attacked before in front of the Lucian. It wasn't that's not an option. No, no, they were, they had not seen any creatures die. Neither of them had, they, they were both new to the battlefield. My attack turns are going to be playing Shark Chariot, because then we can play all these other things on, on their turn. I got the kids. I was, I was tapped out, I think. Well, maybe I wasn't tapped out, but... Like but yeah, they could add the Lucian later than all those other ones. So they get a random spell from my deck? It's probably not that scary. This, this is one problem with Prankster. It's, you know, if we play everything else before Prankster... Then, you know, Prankster won't be able to see anything.
I went with Zed because I thought it may be a little difficult for them to kill Zed and kill... Um... The 2-3, but... No, it wasn't. Where they could kind of ignore Prankster and just kill the other one. Of course, they just have standalone. What do we have here? Why not? It's hard to have. Uh, it's playtime. So I just attacked into that, gave them another free spell. I got ways to find in Fresh catch. Yeah, it's not my day today. What's the most punishing card for going leading with Zed, then Soul Shepherd? You know, Mystic Shot, and then get excited, and then what's my most punishing punishing card here? Standalone. Oh well. <laughs> they probably got Deathmark out of my deck to Deathmark whenever I Deathmark. True. They don't have a one man away to kill this this shadow seer. I'll be sad. <laughs> we definitely have some powerful stuff going on in this deck. Dang, maybe if- wait, if I just attacked out, I had lethal, didn't I? Let the light guide you. Yeah, I guess if I attacked out, there was no way they could have survived. Is that right? Good job, prankster. <laughs> Was that the worst way to, to lose from the opponent's perspective? Just jump blocked to death. Prankster can really do some some good work, that's for sure. But it is situational. You know, if you don't if you don't have anything else and you just have a prankster, it's gonna do absolutely nothing. Raven as again. I have liked the Islander.
but honestly playing the the one mana four three ephemeral maybe i shouldn't be playing that maybe i should be playing sparring student instead Do not fear, fear itself. Yeah, we're, we're currently over, what rank are we? Yeah, we're, we're like a thousand or something right now. The ranks just vary so incredibly much every single day. They go so far up and down. Um, highest I was was two days ago. We were number seven. Um, but I'm not. I don't always just play like the very best deck to to try to keep my rank really high. Like we're playing all like tier two decks today. It's like a tier two Tuesday. <laughs> kind of want to just go straight to attack so they don't get to kill my Zed. No. Oh, hello there. No. They kill Zed, they kill Zed. They, they could have killed Zed the last, the previous turn and they didn't do it. Yeah, it's fine. This is better. The maximum stages are 120. I'm not sure then. I guess... So what level am I... I guess... Oh, that... You probably mean... Um, as far as collection, like the rewards. The rewards level. Because there are six of those that are each 20. So that's the maximum is 120. Okay, so like that. Um, my region levels, yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't know the exact number. They're all. My lowest one is 16. My, my highest one is 19 for the the regions. I haven't leveled up any to 20. They're all between 16 and 19. All of my regions are. My most powerful card to play right now is Hecarim, but Hecarim is all in. Like, or like, you know, like if we play Hecarim, and they would have to have like another thermogenic beam. But if they have like a thermogenic beam, or even just like the the three two that stuns the Hecarim, either of those would kind of be bad. That's my resting. Um, I'll try going this route where Static Shock is my worst card for to see. But even if they have Static Shock, I have the Glimpse Beyond. Um, this taps me out, but kills this thing. Is that worth it? Hey, Blade's going good. Easter Joyce. Welcome. Yeah, 
Yeah, I would have relied on me drawing another ephemeral unit that would have cost two or less, and I, I don't have a lot of those. But it is a, was a possibility to draw one. Basically just thermogenic beam. So, you know, I'm basically kind of stretching their removal spells. They use removal on the Shadow Fiend, which I guess I could have... No, I don't want to block it. That's right, I don't want to block it. Yeah. We have found out that today they always have the exact card they need. That is very true. Don't blink or you miss me. They have had, yep, they had thermogenic beam. They had it. I would have played Hecarim. They probably don't have the third thermogenic beam, right? Just let me go to attacks. Attacking will level up Hecarim. Hecarim will bring four ephemeral units alongside with it. We got uh, two dead sharks. It's always pretty fun though. It's pretty satisfying just attack and then the board goes crazy and all this stuff shows up. Yeah, so we got an, a new board and therefore new music. Hasn't been lucky so far. All right, we're only attacking for 31. It's not much. I don't know how they stay alive with four mana. Um, like Static Shock. I mean, Static Shock keeps them alive, I guess. They would go down to two if they Static Shock and then double chump. Alright, we're coming back. Looks like I, I played around that other Thermogenic Beam perfectly by not playing the Hecarim before I did. Let them cast that on Zed. Um, Katarina Burns okay. It's it's you know probably like a a tier two deck. Like it's, it's you know it's like same level as like the decks that we're playing here today. So it's not like one of the best decks, but it's not bad. You can win. You can definitely win games with it. Um. 
Sam looks pretty good. Basically, never gonna have the Soul Shepherd in combat anyway. I think I'll take the the free kill. Their best card would be Frenzied Skitter. That's fine. Okay. So I have five mana right now. Got all three centuries. question is how do I use these two shadow fiends and the de death mark and you know I have the mark of the isles death mark combo where I, I get to mark of the isles my own creature and then death mark it away so you know I can turn Zed into a 5-4 um, and everything like that interaction they're going to have with their three mana. They could definitely mess up my death mark. Just attack here. Look out for reavers. Uh, 
kind of want them to tap out for my Mark of the Isles Death Mark combination. I feel like they're setting up Ruination. Kind of feel like that's the plan. Is set up Ruination. I'm not sure though. I don't know. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know what they're doing with just not spending any mana this previous turn. If they ruin, like, if I have a lot of creatures in play and they ruination, I don't, um, like that, that prankster dies and it doesn't, it doesn't see everything else dies. So you don't just get lots of triggers from prankster. Okay. That's not a ruination. Why did they not play that first? What are you doing with your sequencing over here? or not. If not, I can play a 6-6 six, six Scourge and Death Market. That may not be a bad thing to do. Just don't know what, what they got going on over here. The thing I was thinking was, will I regret using Death Mark on just like a 2 1? Or rather have it for a Trendomir? Like, I would like them just to play Trendomir here. I would, I would like that. Alright, that's close enough to Trendomir. Blade says, do you, do you know what I wish they would do is to make it so that you can change the image of the deck. So many decks I have are called like Mage Secret Thrust, which so shows Lux. Yeah, I wish yeah, I wish you could change the image of the deck also. Because yeah, so many are like this because it's just your most expensive champions, and so many are like the same champion. Um you know, the same few champions, and you don't get to change that. I agree, that would be nice to, to be able to change that for sure. Yeah, that, that seems like a change that, that they'll make. Because um, they have talked about changing the the deck view of, of, you know, just improving it. And so, yeah, I could definitely see them improving that as well.
kind of feel like their plan is to just play atrocity. You know, they who, those who endure an atrocity and kill me that way. Doesn't that feel like that's their plan, that, they're, that I'm going to be dead? And if so, if that is their plan, do I need to go for killing them right now? So let's see, this puts them down to five. Uh, but then I have four creatures still. So this is me going for lethal. I feel like their plan is another they who those who endure and then atrocity. Yep, pretty sure that was their plan. And so that's why I figured that I have to kill them this turn. And so I went with the Mark of the Owls play and this for lethal, so. Alright, figured out how I was dead the very next turn, and I had to go for lethal, and I did, and we won. Hooray. I'll get that window out of here. All right, that was a good game. We're on a winning streak. Same kind of matchup it looks like. Um, I'm keeping the two creatures. I'm not sure about the spells. I think I get rid of this spell. Uh, I don't know about this one or not. I'll keep it. Yeah, we're at 813. We were we were just at like 1200 a little bit ago after losing after losing the first 5 out of 6. You lose a lot of ranks when you lose. Started started at like 400 something and then we lost 5 out of 6 so we're at 1200. And then we've won 3 in a row and now we're back up to 800. Whole bunch of poros. Not a good plan to play Shadow Fiend against millions of poros. Millions of poros. Poros for me. Millions of poros. Poros for free. They got the affectionate Poro as a random hit. I got some good random hits. It's, this is definitely a real good one because that kills my Green Glade duo. Now the Thresh kills this. Um, I guess I don't do anything.
only at 2 out of 7 for Hecarim. Kind of a tricky game. I'm letting them do a, a whole lot of blocking and letting all their things die to be able to flip Thrash. Like, that's that's what they want. So they want to be able to flip their Thrash. Stay back. You have to get me out of here. I just can't really stop it. It's like I, I could just not attack. Like, what am I doing if I'm not attacking? Interesting. Oh, wait, that's still gonna level up Thresh, right? Le Thresh just needs to see anything die, right? All right, so that's basically me dead. Yeah, that's lethal. I feel like I didn't play, I, you know, I just feel like something went wrong for me that game. I mean, the, the Challenger Poro kill and the Green Glade duo definitely was something wrong, but... As far as our deck goes, the Shadow Fiend was probably our weakest card in our deck. Um, it's hard for that thing to, to really trade with cards, but there was a couple of times where it was nice having, like, you know, we were, make it cost, like, zero mana with the Islander and can play it on turn one and attack, or... You know, with it costing just one man, it's easy to play it and death mark. Um, the glimpses, yeah, there's there's definitely times where the glimpses were really awkward. Also, um, that that's what I did wrong that game is I didn't mulligan away the glimpse. I I thought that they were going to be, you know, seeing Thresh Trindamir. I thought they were going to be a, a control deck and you know a lot more like Withering Whale type cards and things like that. But no, they were really creature heavy, and so that glimpse was really stuck in my hand. Um, before this deck, I didn't have glimpse. I had uh, Black Spear, but Black Spear costing three now. I went with glimpse, but yeah, I think you're right that we probably don't need all three glimpse. Glimpse is really good against the removal heavy decks, but the removal heavy decks are, are our best matchup already, which is why I didn't have glimpse. To begin with, um, I could see just playing like Frenzied Skitter or Shadow Assassin, honestly. Like, maybe we should just have Frenzied Skitter in this deck. That could be the card that I'm missing, because all these matchups that we're losing were quick. Like, for the most part, like a lot of them that we lost were just like aggro mirrors where we were just barely a little bit behind. Uh, or, you know, like something happened, you know, like where they had, you know, like this extra card that really helped push them over to the edge. Um, and Skitter could be something we can play defensively, like where we play our ephemeral units on our turn. We can play Skitter on their turn, and it's a great defensive card. So I could see playing Skitter instead of... Yeah, like that's, that's probably the card that I'm missing. Um, so somebody will ask about Iron Harbinger here, 2-4... Fear, two four fearsome. Whenever you attack, you grant grant it plus one plus zero for each ephemeral ally. I do really like four toughness. It does block very well being four toughness. But it is just kind of like a a singular attacker. It kind of it, it kind of feels like the same 
space is Prankster, and I think that Prankster does a better job of getting damage in. But it's, it's basically filling that same spot. I bet Skitterer is the card that I'm missing. Hey, Vice. Hello. Does give me yet another three. If I'm playing Skitter, I probably don't want Dark Water Scourge. Yeah, it is harder to kill. Yeah, Iron Harbinger doesn't die too easily. That's true. How many threes do I really want, though? If, if I just take out Glimpse Beyond and put in Skitter... Gets me up to 14 threes. It's a lot of threes. So, hmm. I don't know, that's something to think about, but I, I think that that's I think that's the card that's one card that we're missing. I think that I should make room for them. Um but yeah, I kinda wanna trim on Shadow Fiend and uh so I wanna trim on Shadow Fiend and on Oh uh Glimpse Beyond, yeah. Like right away, you know, like we just you know, if we just take out Glimpse Beyond for that I don't know, I'll have to think about it, because the Shadow Fiend like, wasn't amazing either, but then if you're not playing Shadow Fiend, then it makes Islander and Deathmark a lot worse, and same thing with if we take out Scourge, it makes Deathmark a lot worse as well. But I think Skitterer could have been amazing for us in these games. Thinking about, especially like those first, especially the first five games that we played. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically what I have to say about the deck right now. Uh, I do, I do think the deck was good. Like the, the first, you know, five or six games, I guess like the first six games that we played, our opponents just had awesome hands, awesome curves, like the perfect cards at the perfect times. And we were barely losing all of them. And like, that's how, that's how it felt like it was going. It didn't feel like our deck was bad. It just felt like that we were, uh, you know, ending up against best case scenario from our opponent quite often and um and therefore we're you know just barely losing but i think there's stuff here i think it, i think it does need a little tuning around the edges like you know some of those cards that weren't uh pulling their weight maybe shouldn't be three ofs um so i'll work on it uh but skitter is, is the card that i think that we need to add in here uh help us out against aggro matchups because removal heavy control decks we're going to be pretty good against in general, especially with Shark Chariots being able to keep returning. Um, like those are the kind of like that's a pretty decent like those matchups are pretty good for us. If we can, you know, play a longer game, it's the really fast decks that can be faster. And the, and basically that we don't have defense like we, we're not playing blockers, you know, so we have just attackers. So they their creatures are attacking and blocking ours are just attacking. Okay. Um, what do you think about the Shadow Isles Piltover deck with Spider, some Ephemerals, Haunted Relics at least, and Vaughn? Yep. Uh, we, I played that yesterday. I played Mogwai's version yesterday. It didn't have Haunted Relics, so it didn't, didn't have that. Um, but that deck felt, uh, it felt like whenever you had Vaughn Yip going, you know, it was, it was pretty powerful. But, any like the games you didn't have on yip it was very very underpowered and just overall it wasn't very impressive and um i don't know it's it's tough to to really have a deck like that where so many of your cards aren't going to be very good and you just hope you have von yip to make them better and then you hope that 
making them a little bit better there and you know basically giving them like plus two plus two at that point you hope that's good enough against what your opponent's doing it's it's tough um tough thing to stretch i think i think you basically need you need to play cards that are better on their own and can win games on their own and that just when you have von yip then your deck is uh much is just even more powerful and, and even better but whenever you don't have on you there your regular cards can win games but um yeah all right anyway there we go so that's ephemeral aggro uh, those y'all watch on youtube hit that like button over there and leave a comment i'd appreciate if you do both of those the likes and comments help out um also if you want to see your deck on stream it's a it's just a ten dollar donation the link's down below I'll put it here in chat, but donation decks are just $10 if you want to see your deck or if you have a uh, an idea, a deck idea that you want me to build around. I also will build the decks for you, you know, if you want to see, um, you know, I mean, build a deck around anything. So just a $10 donation and, you know, you on YouTube or uh, here at Twitch, anybody can send that over. All right, but that's Ephemeral Aggro. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.